Hi, this is Harir Gragai. Thank you for clicking my video. Today, I'm going to talk about basic concept of hazard analysis and critical control point HACCP. Let's begin. Before starting hazard analysis and critical control point HACCP, there are two big words, hazard analysis and critical control point. Do you know what is hazard? You might have thought risk or danger. Yes, you are right. Hazard in HACCP has very similar meaning. It's an agent or condition of food which may make food unsafe. We may get sick or sometimes leading to death. Hazards are biological, chemical, physical substances. We have to identify and evaluate these potential hazards with their impact to the consumer. This analysis is called hazard analysis. We analyze their chances of occurrence during multiple stages of food processing. Their degree of harmfulness is also determined. In fact, harmfulness and chances of occurrence of any hazard is called hazard analysis. CCP is a control step which must be applied to prevent or eliminate or to reduce to an acceptable level. This acceptable level is separated by critical limit, CCL. CCL might be in range or up to certain value. If metal particle is a CCP, then up to two millimeter iron particle can be an example of CCL. In food industry, these CCL are based on research, government recommendations, customer need, or sometimes based on experiences of the industry. Now, let me go back to late 1950s. American Aeronautic Agency, NASA, had a challenge to send safe food to the aeronauts. NASA, in collaboration with Pillsbury Company and Natick Research Lab, designed the HACCP concept for the first time for a space food. Many work has been done since then. Nowadays, thousands of HACCP and HACCP based food safety system are in place. I will not talk more about the history of HACCP here today, but I'm giving you some idea how HACCP was important, how the concept was generated and why it is so popular. Now I'm talking about the actual HACCP. HACCP has five steps and seven principles. Five steps we can say as primary five steps. The first one in primary five steps would be the building team. We have to form a team before working HACCP. This team can be a multidisciplinary team representing from different department, different knowledge. Say for example, ideal team could be one from quality control, one from production, one from R&D, one from marketing and sales, one from management. This could be a successful HACCP team. It depends upon what size of organization you have. Description of the food. You need to define your food. What type of food you are making? Is it self-stable food? You need special protection. You need special packaging material. You need special instruction for the consumer what ingredients you are using, what packaging material you are using, you need to define all the factors under this section. And then identify intended use. Where you are going to sell? Is this for any vulnerable group like children, pregnant women, old age people, or any food therapy like a nutraceutical food? Are you selling ready to eat market? Are you selling into wholesale market? Are you selling into further processing industry? You need to define where your product is going to be. The fourth step is you need to define the flow diagram. You need to construct each and every step during your processing. You need to define all the parameters, what pressure, what time, what, what temperature you are going to be doing in each and every step. You need to define completely. And then you need to verify this flow diagram on the side. This is actually double checking your flow diagram. With the verified flow diagram, now you are ready to move into seven HACCP principles. Number one HACCP principle is hazard analysis. Here you are making all the potential hazard and making a list of their potential harm and all the control measures you need to do to control those hazards. You are making an analysis and next you will determine critical control point and then you will define the 
critical control limit. And number four, you need to establish a monitoring system for each CCP. You need to have monitoring method to control those CCP. And number five, you would have a corrective action. If there is any deviation in your system, you need to fix them. So if any deviation occur in CCP, you have to have a corrective actions. Next is your verification procedure. After implementing everything, starting from hazard to corrective action, is your system actually working? Who will verify the whether that work is actually done or not? So it can be a supervision, it can be from surveillance cameras, it can be from the logs produced by machineries, it can be a record from a temperature measuring instrument or anything else. So you need to establish verification procedure for each and every control measures. And the last one is documentation and record keeping. Documentation and record keeping is very important in HACCP, not only because of audit purpose, but for traceability as well. Now I'm going to explain you these seven principles in detail with an example. Hazard analysis. Let's say in a dairy, milk collection is an example here. What could be your physical, chemical and biological hazard during this milk collection? Physical hazard can be hair, chemical hazard can be veterinary drug residue, biological hazard can be harmful bacteria. I'm giving another example. In a baking industry, during baking, what could be physical, chemical and biological hazards? Metal pieces could be a physical hazard, pesticides could be under chemical hazards, pathogenic bacteria and molds could be biological hazard. What could be the control measures for these examples? Let's say hair. How can you control hair while receiving milk? You can do filtration. You can use hair net for the milking personnel, which might be a source of contamination. For VDR, you can use good agricultural practice or good veterinary practice. For the bacterial growth, you can use good sanitation method or you can do immediate chilling after milk collection. Again, for the metal piece in baking industry, you can use metal detector. For the pesticide, you can have better supplier approval program. You can request the suppliers for certificate of analysis or you can test your product itself. For the pathogenic bacteria and mold, you can have better control over time and temperature during baking in the oven. How do you monitor CCP? Let's say baking industry again. You have a CCP with a defined time and temperature. How do you monitor? You can have a thermometer or timer to measure time and temperature. Or if the machinery is automatic one, you can check the log produced by the oven. Now there might be a challenge. What happened if you are deviating from your define CCP. You need to establish corrective action. Say for example, again in oven, you have a low temperature baking for some reason. You need to establish corrective action. What was the reason behind this? You have to go root cause analysis. You may find it could be because of poor maintenance. You need a better maintenance or it may be inefficient employee who needs better training. So you need to go into root cause analysis for each and every deviation, which is called corrective action. Sometimes we may get confused with correction and corrective action. Let me give you some examples. Correction is simply redoing things if something happened wrong. Corrective action is recognizing your root cause and eliminating that root clause and doing that thing again. 
actually you are fixing the root cause in corrective action i'll give you another example if you fail in an exam you can rewrite the exam but your actual reason of being failed in your examination might be your poor preparedness then if you studied hard and reappear in examination that is your corrective action just rewriting an exam is not a corrective action it is just a correction i will give you another example if a surface is not clean for some reason recleaning is just a correction if you go into depth and try to find what could be the reason of improper cleaning it could be a improper training of the employee maybe the quality of detergent or maybe the method of sanitation is not appropriate so you need to find actual reason of deviation and then you can fix it this is called corrective action so in food safety or in hazap we always do corrective action not correction you develop all the procedure all the corrective action all the steps you develop now it's your challenge to verify whether these things are actually done or not this is a challenge to food industry i'm giving an example like a baking industry what could be your verification procedure during baking it can be supervision supervision can be done by a supervisor likewise we can have verification procedure from the log or data produced by the machinery itself so we need to define the procedure to verify all the procedure so the last but not the least step of hasa plan is documentation and record keeping you need to have a proper documentation how the things goes how you fix the problem how you keep all the records of things you need to have a documentation and records the logs can be in different format it can be hard copy soft copies it can be log pictures video any format which can be retrieval after having a record keeping and documentation you can do better audit and better traceability when needed today i try to explain hasab in a very simple way my next video would be for the advanced learner how to write hasab and certain ccp determining process thanks for watching i'll see you in next video please subscribe to my youtube channel to get notified you can follow me in linkedin facebook and twitter thank you